Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Ray Torn, and welcome back to Europa Universalis 4 Domination. All right, so let's go ahead and just jump on into today's episode. I forgot we do need to move our troops around. I guess we're going to do this siege over here. So we need to bring our whole army over here to do that. And we'll keep on challenging them for this, although that's too risky because that couldn't have been us as the defender. But yeah, they'll just take back these two provinces anyway with this fort here. So we're going to try and get them engaged in a, a battle where we have the advantage. It looks like they're now sieging over here. I don't know what they're doing. Hmm. Yeah, they're just kind of all over the place at this point. Because, yeah, they're moving back over here. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. We're clearly going to have to go do a siege, though. So I was going to bring these troops over here with the assistance of them. So they'll be on the sideline here. And we'll have to see if they attack us. I assume they will. They're also going to do this siege over here. So that's a negative. Uh, they're going to attack us here. Not surprising, because they get the mountain bonus. But Aragon's way over here now. So they'll probably have to come back. We have till the 22nd. We should be able to get other troops over here. But if Aragon assists, then this is going to be a difficult battle. Uh, we might want, want to wait until they get locked before we move our own troops over there. Because we, we just need this decisive battle at this point. Okay, so they've gone half the way. They're locked. But yeah, we just need to get a battle done to push their troops out of here. And we're, no matter what, we're going to have to do one where we have the, you know, the negative modifier. And we're very close to losing that. Yeah, because we almost didn't get our troops there in time. Uh, yeah, it looks like we just got there. All right, so that was a, a risky one. And we lost just as many troops as they did. Aragon's coming back, but you'd expect that they wouldn't attack now. So we want... I don't know the difference between these two armies. We really need to have a name, uh, a name for the armies, so I know which one's which. Preferably something that's not in French, so that I would uh, be able to pronounce it <laughs> if we needed to say it consistently. So yeah, if you guys got any name suggestions, I'm open to hearing them. Uh, we can get the military tag. Hmm. We definitely want to get this right now. To get all those bonuses, but the question is, do we want to switch our infantry? It's probably too risky, guys. And we're now ahead of time on the military tech as well, so that gives us that army tradition bonus. It's not a significant bonus, but it helps. So are they... Oh, so Castile is already military tech 7, so no uh, bonus there, but Aragon's still behind. Yeah, I don't think we should switch over because remember when you switch your your troops over, it's uh, it just completely wipes out your morale. And these guys can come back out. So let's go ahead and get them going. Look at old Scotland over here, man. We we're taking all those provinces over in the south, getting us more war score. That's helpful. Uh, looking for the enemy fleets, not seeing any. Yeah, not seeing any out here in the Mediterranean. So let's. Go ahead and go out. Hable States is already getting most of the, the blockade score there. And here's just one province. So you have to wrap all the way around here. Where the hell are their fleets at? I'm not entirely sure. I guess we could wrap around here and do one of these locations. Also ensures they can't get the blockade bonus for any kind of a siege there. Oh, there they are. Alright, so that's them there. So you can keep them bottled in here. Where's Aragon's fleet, though? Yeah, they might be over here somewhere. Yeah, I guess we'll just blockade there. No point of going all the way around. Even though it's not that effective. There's only one, uh, one province here. So you're not really earning much. Yeah, we'll do the siege here. We'll see if they attack us again. Where they can get that nice, uh, mountain bonus. Yeah, we'll just have to see. Uh, these guys are taking attrition sitting here. We should probably come over here instead. We'll still get the river bonus that they attack, which is the same thing as the hills, but here, if they attack from certain locations, you can get the river bonus on top of the hill bonus. 
All right, well, we've got this all taken over. Excellent, so now we can move on to Valencia. So let's go ahead and get all this territory taken while these guys come down to Valencia since they're better. And just get this war score hiked up. I assume they're coming over here now. Yep, they're right over there. Uh, we completed the estate agenda. So got that extra base tax there and got that loyalty as well. So that's great. And yeah, uh, the Spanish are, are distracted with the Scottish invasion in the south. So Scotland has been helpful. I didn't think they would be. All right, so we're going to take these provinces over. Just make sure there's nothing here. I suppose we can switch our troops up since we know that all the Spanish forces are in the south. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, but yeah, the, the issue here is that your morale goes down to zero if you do this. And so it's risky to do during a conflict. Now, as far as which one is most accurate for the uh, the French, I mean, really none of these. This is German, this is Italian, and this is the, the Scots and Irish. Now, of course, you, know, you could use these in many different locations. Uh, mercenaries were very popular, for instance. Uh, many of these are actually represent mercenaries, in fact. Um, yeah, these are all different mercenary types here. Anyways, uh, we could use pretty much any of these. I suppose from a roleplay standpoint, it might make the most sense to get the Condota because, you know, we're, we've been doing the Italian Wars. So why not? Now, of course, you don't normally have to select these based on just roleplay-wise. You'd probably pick them based on the uh, the actual pips and what would be most helpful for you. But, man, I'm trying to stick to roleplay for this this Let's Play as far as which troops we use. So I think that's the one that makes most sense, being that we're heavily involved in the Italian Wars. Yeah, they're getting all these provinces back. But yeah, it's distracting them. Right when we need them to be distracted. So we can get our morale back up. So one of our allies will take that for us. And so all the war score we're losing here in the south, we're just getting back by taking over all of Aragon. Uh, Aragon will be completely occupied soon. So that's fantastic. So remember, we need to get to 60-something percent to get all of our objectives. And we can go ahead and take all... Well, we can't get past the fort. Could go into Castile's territory. So they have that fort there, but it looks like there's no fort protecting this province. But we can't leave and get over there. It's blocked by, I guess, that fort. Okay, so yeah, not able to to go any further, as you can see. These troops are stuck here, so we need to have them support that. So what we should do is make sure we're in the location where we're not taking attrition. Uh, so we just lost 16 ducats, unfortunately. Remember, we're still getting the ticking war score as well. So we'll take over this fort, and then we could push further into their territory. We have so many other things we want to work on, though. And we did finish up the exploration here. Excellent. So let's go and send them on the next mission. Which will be the Caribbean. So they'll go off and continue exploring. Man, look at how many allied troops are over here. There's a lot when they're all together like that. Alright, so we had the Siege of Valencia. And the event, the Sack of Valencia. So this gives us a few different options on what we want to do to the city. We can say we need better payment routines and harder discipline. This will increase our army professionalism, something we really need uh, for one of those missions. And, you know, it takes a while to, to build it up. That's pretty helpful. It would require us to take a loan, though. And we would uh, get this event, or Valencia would get this event that they've been looted. And they're going to take a bunch of devastation, which hurts our, our rivals. We can instead say we must punish the perpetrators. We'll lose prestige. They're still going to get a lot of devastation, even more in this case. And Aragon's opinion will change. Okay. Or we say such are the rules of warfare. We'll actually lose army professionalism as well as the prestige, but gain money and military power. And it's going to be devastated completely. 100 devastation, so much so that they're actually going to lose some base production. Hurt them in the long run. But we'll get... Uh, or no, they'll get unrest reduction. Okay, so let's go with this option. I know we'll have to take the, the loan, but that's fine. I want the army professionalism. I feel like that's worth 
alone. And we got one of those cores done. Excellent. I was hoping we could get those done in time so that, uh, so that basically we won't have the overextension issues as much once we take over. Well, I guess it doesn't matter because we're not taking any provinces for ourselves, huh? I suppose we could take this one over though. And then get rid of the fort here. Yeah, maybe we'll take that one. I don't know where the aggressive expansion is going to be because now it's different. Because we got that modifier, so we'll have 10% less aggressive expansion. So we now have that loan that we took. So we don't want to spend this money. We're going to repay the loan. Uh, we finished up the siege there. Forgot we'd done that. So now we can go and advance further into territory. We're at 70%. Could just go for the full 100% war score so that we can... Uh, get as, m as much as possible. I suppose it makes sense because you still got the ticking war score. You get 9.8 out of that. And we're winning the war. This is a rival. Why not, uh, you know, why not cause them as much trouble as possible? Let's go ahead and take these provinces over. Now there is this siege here that we're going to have to go fight. I'm hoping they can get this done. Eh, not in time. Let's first finish up what we're doing here. The sweating sickness spreads through Paris. So Louis XI can flee the city, which would decrease stability. Instead, we can spend every effort to limit its effects, and good god, that would be expensive. Or we can spend Diplo power. We're going with the stability, guys. Because hopefully we've built some up. Although, yeah, I made it so you can't build up stability. So we'll be at like negative. 0.5, but it won't actually be enough to reduce it. But yeah, you can't build it up. It just sits at zero. I kept that so that, you know, you didn't, you know, once you got to plus three, you couldn't just sit at it forever. So we've taken both these provinces, going to continue on. So win here, force their fleet out. That's the main thing I wanted to do here. I guess there's no point on taking this one here because that fort will just retake it. Could go after Toledo, their, their capital, but we wouldn't want to use this army for that purpose, but our army sitting here would mean that we continue to, to loot it, so might as well keep them there, we'll loot them. So the selling of indulgences, wow, so we can say a donation to the Pope shall be arranged, we'll give the Pope a stupid amount of money, again it's based off of your income and that's how you get these stupid amounts, it's just getting more and more ridiculous as the game goes on. We'll get some papal influence, but uh, you'd also have Catholic uh, you know, reform desire increased by a little bit. Where you say indulgences are the easy option, repentance is better, and we'll lose some papal influence, which is kind of a bummer because we're almost at 50. But clearly the better option for us. We'll, we'll also uh, lose a little bit of opinion with the Pope, but it's not. It's not much. So yeah, we'll get this siege done here just to push their, their troops out, and then we need to go deal with this, this siege up in the north. And I was hoping we could get through there, but that's not going to work clearly, so... So let's go and start marching up north. Um, well, because we're sieging here, we can actually go this way. All right, well, that works out. So yeah, we'll attack from this way then. That's far quicker. And we'll bring these troops as well. Though, let's let these guys pass first. So yeah, we'll help out uh, in the siege here. Try to make sure we don't lose the province. And we were able to do this naval battle and defeat their fleet again, but unfortunately, we did not destroy any of their ships. Now, one question that's been asked, uh, that was asked to a few, oh, there's the uh, Aragon fleet. I need to go attack them. Uh, but this was asked a, a couple videos ago. Why I don't ever manually retreat from battles. So I, I think this might've been asked in the Milan series as well, and I explained it in that one. Uh, I believe, I might be thinking of the, the previous campaign, but one of uh, the older campaigns, and somebody asked me about this. I don't do it because I feel like it's, you know, an advantage, a huge advantage that the player has over the, the AI, because the AI doesn't manually retreat from battles as far as I know. I've never seen them do it before. They just take all the losses and then, you know, retreat uh, once they're forced to. And so that's where they take a lot of their casualties, because if you can retreat after, I think, what's it, 10 days that you can retreat, you know, you can basically avoid some of the most significant casualties that you take in battles. And so I just feel like, you know, most most of the time I'm not going to do too much uh, just because AI can't do it or whatever. And I'll exploit the AI. I'll use little exploits and stuff sometimes. 
you know, for instance, you know, the, the AI will consistently attack in mountains sometimes, uh, and you can kind of bait them into to attacking you in the mountains or whatever. You know, put like a small army there and then use your larger army to, to sit on the side, though most of the time they can register that uh, there's another army nearby, and so they won't always do the attack. But, you know, you can kind of bait the, the AI into doing some silly stuff, and I sometimes make use of, of tactics like those. But I felt like this one, retreating, the manual retreating, the ability for the player to do that but the AI not to do it, is, is just a, such a huge discrepancy in, in uh, manpower. That's what it creates. The AI has more significant manpower issues than the player already because they mismanage their troops and they take attrition in places when they wouldn't normally have to. Uh, we defeated their fleet again, but again, didn't sink anything. So yeah, that's unfortunate. Probably gotta have to go home and repair. Yeah, we'll repair. And we can get our admin tech. Increases governing capacity, but it's not really an issue. But I guess we might go ahead of time. Not entirely sure if we're gonna get that bonus or not. But yeah, we're just gonna get it. Yeah, we did get the production efficiency, so we're still ahead of time here. And also unlocked a new uh, decision we can take. But yeah, just to finish it up, what I was saying, I just feel like it, it gives you too big of a, a bonus. Because uh, AI already takes the, the higher manpower losses due to... Uh, they don't seem to recognize attrition at all. And so yeah, I don't manually retreat from battles. I just let the battle play out. In this game. Obviously other games I'll play differently, but in this one I feel like it's just... It's too big of an advantage for the player. So this would increase missionary strength, but also increase the cost to embrace institutions. So we're not gonna do that one. Maybe later, if we're dealing with uh, having to convert a lot of provinces, such as after the Reformation happens, then I can see it being useful. But uh, yeah, we don't need it right now. All right, so we're gonna attack those guys as soon as that other army gets a little bit closer. But yeah, they're still a little bit further than I'd like. So let's let them get to move into this province. I will be able to win this battle regardless. But we just want to have as much assistance as possible. And yeah, it looks like we're going to get to the assistance from our allies as well. Ah, that means everybody took off here. Damn it. You guys were doing that siege, working so hard. They just took off and left. Oh, I didn't realize this was pause. I'm just sitting here staring at it. Now, why aren't our troops moving? Uh, we got another battle down here. I don't think we'll be able to get over there in time. We'll try. Our fleet is fully repaired. So that nice, uh, very highly advantageous battle here. We got the train bonuses. We got significantly more manpower. But yeah, you can see they didn't retreat. They just took all the casualties in a battle where it was... I mean, they were outnumbered like 3 to 1. Uh, and they, they didn't retreat. And so they just sit there and take all those casualties. Now, given we actually did lose a lot of troops here, despite the, the high numbers that we had. I don't know if those were all our troops. I always think that it's like the, the war where you can click on these and see exactly your casualties. You know, like at the end of the war. But yeah, you can't see that. But anyways, we still uh, killed a lot of the troops. We're at 75%. And we're going to continue this war until we get the full 100%. Just take as much as we possibly can from them. So it looks like we'll have to do the siege ourselves. So we'll send these guys in with their, their siege and didn't leave the other army sitting over here so they can assist, just in case they attack us in the mountains there again. Yeah, we're the only way we're going to get this done is if we do it ourselves. And we did finish up that exploration mission. So let's go ahead. So we cannot do over here just yet. Do we have to do... Africa. Okay, so let's do the West African Sea. But we want to colonize North America and the Caribbean. That's the areas I'm looking to, to colonize. We won't go with just the historical areas that, that France went with, though. We'll just colonize whatever we want to colonize. All right, so we'll go ahead and recall the diplomat from the Papal States. And Burgundy has almost completely occupied Savoy here, so they're clearly going to win that war. Not surprising. I'm picking on them right after we had just caused them all those troubles. We actually lost this battle. Oh, okay. That's not... I <laughs> see. It's these guys. Alright, so they will not be able to go on their voyage. 
Because they got defeated in a battle. Because uh, their fleet is over here. Is that like a trade fleet or something? Not entirely sure. Uh, but you see that their fleet was able to successfully get back into port. I was wondering uh, what happened here. I thought we lost that battle. I was like, how did we lose that? We didn't. All right, so they're going to retake that. Let me see if I can't engage this fleet over here. I think it's a trade fleet. Let me just take a look here. Well, it's got five frigates and three trade ships, but yeah, we'll go ahead and get those guys engaged. And we were able to sink one of the frigates. All right, so that'll allow these guys, we're gonna let them repair first, but that'll allow them to go back out. And Aragon is again out in the Mediterranean, causing problems, but we were able to catch him this time. All right, excellent. So another battle we were successful in. Now, we're not getting much war score here. If any, I don't know if you get war score from the naval battles. We're getting a uh, little bit of prestige and uh, we're getting some naval tradition. No war exhaustion. All right, so I guess we'll go ahead and go back and repair up those ships. There's nothing else to do over here unless we want to go around and uh, do more blockades. So still waiting to get this siege done and that will probably be the war. Oh, it looks like these guys, oh, okay, they went back out. They're doing the exploration mission. I thought because I gave the manual order, uh, the manual order to go back home, that they would uh, be taken off that mission. But luckily, they weren't. Uh, we did just lose a uh, stability, so now we're at plus two. Unfortunately, so stability must be going down. And there is a call for peace now. But the war's not really won. So yeah, now we're getting more exhaustion, but we don't have the hundred percent. We need a hundred percent, man. So let's keep it going. We'll just take the the extra war exhaustion, unfortunately. And we're also losing these battles over here, which is ticking the war score down. So that's kind of a shame. But yeah, we have all this occupied over here. This is about to get taken. So maybe that's when we'll end the war. Did they just beat my ships again? God damn it, Castile. <laughs> Are they exploring too? They must be doing like the same exploration mission or something. Jeez. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and go out over here and battle those guys again. I think after we take that, maybe we'll end this. Yeah, our fleet's not really doing anything here. Yeah, just wait till they finish that up. We're at 86%. I don't really want to get all this extra war exhaustion. We can get the things we want. Let's end this conflict, guys. Let's make peace. I don't know why I clicked on the extra button there, but yeah, we get uh, all the ones we want here. Aggressive expansion is going to go up by uh, 41.9. So we will see that coalition and Genoa is going to be added to it. It's another Italian power, but that's it. But yeah, we're definitely going to have some problems with aggressive expansion. Uh, we don't really get much overextension. I'm not entirely sure why we're getting any overextension because we didn't take any promises. Oh, wait a minute. I see what's going on here. We have to give this to Naples. So we want to transfer that to them. And we shouldn't be getting any aggressive expansion. Uh, so yeah, we want to go ahead and re-add that. And this will all go to Naples. Now that does cause the problem of Naples become more powerful and thus, uh, you know, they'll probably have more liberty desire. So could go after uh, all Sardinia if we wanted to. Because I kind of want to add something on here if it doesn't cause too many problems. But I'm thinking we'd add this one. That'd get us up to 50 on the aggressive expansion. We'd get a little bit of overextension since we're taking a province. What's key here is that more Italians, including Milan, will now join that coalition. So it's a very anti-French Italian coalition with almost all the Italian countries going into coalition against us because, you know, obviously they, they see what we're doing here. <laughs> we're uh, conquering the peninsula. So I think this would be, I think this would be worth it though, uh, to get one more province in the weekend Aragon. And that's a good fort province. So we can delete this fort here. This one actually has hills while that one doesn't. So we'd probably just completely delete that one. 
Uh, they can't get past it. I think it's a good Fort Province to have. So yeah, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this peace treaty here. Uh, we'll see if we can get anything else. We should be able to. We still got points. Wow, look at how much money we can get. Well, that's not going to cause any inflation issues. <laughs> you know what? Let's, let's tick this down. And see if there's anything else we want before I go about doing that. Because yeah, you could force them to release that province there and they would accept that. It's divided up being over the war score. So could do that. Nothing here to be done, though. So yeah, that, that would actually help because that's a, a mountain fort. But we will have a guarantee with them if we do that, which takes up a slot. I think you can just cancel it. I'm not sure though. I believe you can just cancel the guarantee immediately. That just means they'll just attack them and reconquer them. So probably just better to take all that money in that case. Though it does cause some problems because they have to do a war real quick. How much money can we get? We can still get 229. Let's just do this. Yeah, let's do this, guys. All that money would have caused us lots of problems with the inflation. I mean, we got 0.08, but it would have been like double that. And inflation's not always something you, you really consider, but uh, you know, with this mod and not being able to reduce it, it is a problem. All right, so let's get our troops out of here. I guess we'll I mean, we'll get ready for the war against Brittany, but obviously we've got to spend a considerable amount of time at peace now to burn off all that aggressive expansion because we got a lot of problems here. Castile is no longer a uh, you know, a potential rival for us, which is great because I don't even want to be rivaled with them. And so we want to rival England, and they're not a choice. What is going on here? Why can you not rival England? I'm not entirely sure why it's working that way. That's yeah, very strange. Okay, I guess we'll do the, the Mamluks here in Egypt. Yeah, what else are we going to do? Just them or the Ottomans. Uh, so I suppose we can embargo them. We never embargoed Castile. So yeah, let's go ahead and embargo. Although, yeah, we do have a diplomat. So I'll we'll get them embargoed. And then we'll want to stop paying for all these forts. So let's mothball all those. And we'll keep paying for the troops for now. I'm thinking about training them up so that we can get that professionalism up to 10% because it's very close and that's what we need for that mission. So I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Might also improve our generals, though that's probably not likely. But uh, Yeah, sure, why not? Alright, so we're finally at peace again. We have peace in our lands. I'm just going to have to spend some time at peace. I'm just going to turn this up. Uh, speed up, spend some time, burn off that aggressive expansion. And also, we're going to want to fight more rebellions, because we're going to be seizing some land here soon, and we can summon the diet. Maybe we might want to do that first. Maybe we can uh, avoid potential rebellions. Probably not, though. Well, here we get some, some loyalty, but yeah, I'm not going to take that national tax modifier. We're just going to have to lose the stability. Let me see if it actually is going to take stability from us. That well, looks like we're good. Okay, so what we're going to want to do now is let's go ahead and do the sum of the diet and probably just do another one of these church ones because we got to build the churches for multiple missions. Even if uh, we did learn the other day that that one mission that required us to do a certain amount of the uh, agendas for the clergy if there's other requirements for that and so you don't really need to do these ones we'll see what other options are so what does the nobility want because this would give us a, a army reformer a level three who'd be cheaper to hire they just want us to build up our manpower reserve but the problem here is that you fail the mission if you end up at war which we might not have control over that's a real possibility you know if somebody attacks you or if you got to support one of your your allies and then you fell and you lose the, the opinion with the nobles. 
It would be nice to have that one. Let me just take a look at our current guy, because we do have one, but we can't promote him. He's a level two. Well, this guy would be a level three. And yeah, most importantly, he's of our own culture and religion and stuff, so it'd be pretty useful to have and cheaper. So I feel like we should go ahead and, and do this mission for the nobles. Yeah, let's do the mission for the nobles, guys. This is a pretty good one. And all we have to do is, you know, <laughs> avoid war and get the manpower up to uh, 50%. So basically like 20-something thousand. And then we'll get that completed. And I did forget that I wanted to go ahead and seize land as well. Well, while we have the higher uh, loyalty, but yeah, we're still gonna piss off the bourgeoisie. And thus we still have the rebellions here. That one's gonna get destroyed by Burgundy because they're going through our territory and you know, the rebels are aggressive against everybody. Uh, the Papal States will not be able to do this one for us because they're exiled currently. What if we gave them access to our territory? Wouldn't that make them so they're not uh, exiled anymore? You know what? I think they need to go back to their home territory, though. I'm not sure on that one. But yeah, we could take a look. Uh, so access. Offer military access. Yeah, they're still exiled. So Castile has marked us as a rival. Okay, so we will have to bring the troops down here. That's fine. We'll get those guys wiped out real quick. I did forget to set these guys a drill, so that was my bad. And another rebellion happened right here. It might get destroyed on its own. Ah, damn it. They took that province from us. So have to take it back. But yeah, you get the penalties whenever they take it from you. All right, so let's go ahead and march back over to here. That rebellion's been dealt with, as has that one. So once these guys get over here, we'll get them drilling. And we did core that territory there. So now we can make this into a state. Is this going to be profitable, though? It's cost 0.11 maintenance, and it will increase our income. Usually it is profitable. Uh, our governing capacity... What is that at? Didn't we just increase that? We just increased that, so that should be pretty fine. Pretty good. So I was gonna get that cord as well. So I'm gonna spend some admin power on all this. All right, so we finished up that exploration mission, so we'll have to send him off on another one. So let's see what this event is about. The Basque people, Armand Aller and the Basque people. So we can lose 10 prestige, but we'll get a Basque uh, Catholic statesman. He's he's 50% cheaper to, to hire, and he is level 3. And we are trying to go down that route, so we lose the trade efficiency. Hmm. I don't know if it's worth the prestige. What's the other option here? Or we say he serves better as a local leader of our Basque subjects, and then Gascony would get this modifier for 10 years, only 10 years. I mean, it's helpful, but yeah, it's only 10 years. Hmm, and it's the whole area, by the way. So basically, one province, <laughs> just one province. Yeah, I guess we'll lose the prestige for this one, guys. I think that'd be useful. So let's go and hire him. This is only a little bit more money for a level 3 guy. Uh, now, of course, you're losing the trade efficiency, so that's more money that you're losing. And you're only getting a diplomatic reputation, but yeah. I think it's worth it for the extra dipl point, because we're trying to get through the exploration idea group, so it's worth it. Uh, let's go and get the next mission going. I guess we'll do the West African coast. And Burgundy is no longer a great power. Surprising, because they just increased their lands. I'm not sure what's going on with the, the great power system. I mean, given if somebody else supplanted them, maybe that's what happened. Maybe England supplanted them. I guess there's that. And these have all expired. And we got a visit from some shady people. So because of the 
the intricate web weaver. We could get the shady people and then you get the spy network construction. But it looks like that's the same bonus you get here. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be working right. It's the same exact bonus. It's supposed to be like something beneficial. Let's just take the prestige. Let's go and invest in the next one. Though, let me just take a look at what the technology is that we haven't uh, gotten yet. I mean, it is helpful. But let's go ahead and continue investing so we can get that colonist. Not that there's anywhere for us to colonize just yet. But we can now choose a colonial management policy. These have been changed up a little bit in mod. I don't think I showed that in the uh, episode zero. Now, these have been changed so that you no longer have that really powerful one uh, that decreased the native uprising chance by negative 100%. So basically you never had native uprisings anymore. Yeah, that, that one's no longer available. And just overall, these have been changed. I think that native uprising chance was part of the native trading policy. So now the native coexistence gives you that bonus and you get the assimilation bonus. While native trading policy actually helps you in trade. You get the global tariffs. So you get the plus 10% there. And then there's the native repression policy, which gives you the global settler increase, but also has a penalty. Native uprising chance has increased by a little bit. I intend to change all these up eventually, uh, rather than just change the modifiers, change them up a lot more. But anyways, let's go ahead and pick one here. Uh, so we're going to do... I don't want to do this one. Just to avoid some of the uprisings. Native assimilation is nice as well. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So we got this one. I, I did consider doing the native, uh, the native trading policy, but obviously right now that wouldn't be beneficial because we're not getting any, uh, any tariffs at all. So yeah, it wouldn't really help us. But yeah, let's go ahead and continue drilling these troops, try and get it up to the 10% that we need for that mission. Currently at 9.96%, so almost done. All right, so let's send the fleet back out, or, or I thought we were done. Apparently not. Oh, they're over here now. Okay, um, so I think there's nothing else for them to do, unfortunately. What happened to the... Oh, do we not have the range or something? Yeah, maybe we need to get that one uh, tech before we're going to be able to do the next one. All right, well, in that case, we can just go ahead and send them off on a, a trade mission then. Whichever one's most beneficial, probably just Bordeaux. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be the most profitable one for us. Well, Sevilla is decent as well, but yeah, not not as good as this one here. So let's go ahead and send it back on their, their old trade mission. You know what? I did not mothball these, this uh, fleet here, so we could have been earning a lot more money. I forgot about them. All right, so yeah, that steps up our income by quite a bit. And we have fulfilled that mission finally. We got the 10%. So let's go ahead and see what the effects of that one are, because I don't recall. So we're going to get 10% more army professionalism, so that's awesome. That's doubling it. But we're also going to get access to a unique government reform, which will empower our cavalry and our morale damage. Okay. We'll, we'll take a look at it. The point is, we now got to the next level, so we can now build supply depots. And we have access to state firearm regiments, which increases your land maintenance modifier, but also increases your army drill gain modifier. Yeah, I don't know. I'll pay for that right now. Yeah, we'll slowly get this up. I don't even know if we're going to continue to drill them now, though, because we actually really need money. Yeah, we'll probably go ahead and stop now. So let's go and stop the drilling and stop paying for the troops. Though, did we ever seize that land? We did. We seized it. Um, so yeah, we're at 40.3% uh, right now. So we need to seize land two more times before we can start annexing these guys. Because yeah, we are still losing two Diplo points every month because of that. Uh, about to get our government reform here. So where is that unique one? I assume it's going to be military doctrines and organization. Yep, right here. Okay, so I don't know if that's the one we'll go for. We'll have to take a look and see what the other options are. Is that the, the next one? I think so. Yeah, that's the next one we'll be looking at here soon, actually, because we get this in 1489. Okay. 
So unfortunately, this does have to be a shorter episode today, so I can't play much longer. We still got a loan we gotta pay. I wanna take a look. How much is this gonna cost us? 260. At the uh, Cardinal Minister, this is a pretty good one. Could just take the prestige. Yeah, I like having these, the bonus here. Could end up having those other bad events that come with it, but we'll deal with those if they happen. Did Savoy finish that war? Yeah, they finished that war and lost that territory. That's right, we saw that. So Savoy is weaker. Did we ever see the coalition being created here? Yeah, I don't think I saw a pop up about that. Uh, let's go and get this loan repaid. I suppose I could have done it through here, but just be able to easy click it or repay all loans. Easy click it through there as well. Let's do it the hard way. So we paid off the loan, no longer gotta pay the interest here. And then we get an event that would require us to take another damn loan. Uh, so we're not gonna do that. Not for the mercantilism where we can just increase that with Diplo power. Yeah, we'll just have to take the, the loyalty penalty. Uh, loyalty penalty. They'll also lose influence. Yeah, they'll just have to be pissed off at us for a little while. Yeah, so we're getting these penalties, unfortunately. Trade efficiency is the, the one that's hitting us most here. We lost another one of our generals. Okay, we're not gonna hire one right now. Because we're not training or anything. Uh, and we got the papal influence to go ahead and take one of these decisions. So let's go ahead and do so. Um, so we don't need legitimacy. Could reduce inflation, start working on that. And can't annex just yet, but we're definitely going to want to get that once we can annex. Or we can just get the mercantilism. Which we haven't really invested in mercantilism at all yet. So if we took a look at that, we're currently sitting at 10%. Mercantilism is just basically a good bonus. It does affect events, so there's that. Yeah, usually when you got excess dibble power, you spend it to, to get the mercantilism increased. So yeah, I could use the papal influence for that, or we could get this inflation tick down. So that'd be an option as well. Still working on burning off the war exhaustion. It's not increasing costs too much right now. We're at 1.12%, so it's not too high. But yeah, that would be a a valid option as well. But you might want to wait till you get that a little bit higher. Because you, you get this for for a while. Where is it? Yeah, 1508. So it's 20 years. We don't really need the interest. We're not really taking loans. We don't have corruption problems. Either. I mean, we, we are getting a little... We have a little corruption there. but So you could save a little bit of money. But that overextension will be gone soon. So yeah, let's just go for the mercantilism. So it'll get us up to 11%. Get us more trade power from our provinces and stuff. So it's useful. And we're now at plus three stability again. All right, excellent. So we'll get all those bonuses and overall we're gonna get more money here. So we'll work on construction. Building our manpower back up. Burning off the war exhaustion and the aggressive expansion. And let's see if we can't get a lot of trade power. We can over here, so that'd be useful. Uh, also, Paris needs needs one. We'll do we'll do Paris first. It's the capital. So we'll build up the marketplace. We've got a ton of stuff we can build. We have not been constructing much. I remember we also have a mission that needs us uh, that requires us to get two buildings in a bunch of our provinces. It's like ten provinces in specific areas. Yeah, we won't take the inflation. Let's get the Dipple Power. And unfortunately, we already know Louis kind of crappy. Uh, the, the, the air Louis, I mean. But he also got the obsessive perfectionist. So construction costs has increased by 10%. So that's awesome. He'll have a crappy trait too. Yeah, he's not, he's not aggressive, guys. So he can't get the next military deck. Yeah, let's go ahead and do so. Let's get us the new forts. We also get the Demi Lancers. So a new cab unit. That's one of the ones that the, the mod added. Increased land morale. Also allows us to stay ahead of, of time on this. Alright, so let's go ahead and get our cab changed up. No choices there, just the Demi Lancers. But yeah, I wanted a, another option for the, the Western Cav. Because they're just so garbage. I don't know why they're treated so horribly in the game. And you have them for so long. So do you get another core? So let's go ahead. Do we want to make this into a state? 
I don't know how much of this will conquer. Does increase the income. But yeah, we're about to take a bunch of other stuff. It's only six governing capacity. Why not? Why not? Of course, you got to spend the extra admin points. Yeah, I think it's worth it. That's our province. Uh, I did forget to delete this fortification here, though. We don't need this any longer. So let's go ahead and get rid of it. Damn it. <laughs> Clicking around like crazy. Yeah, let's get rid of that. And we can select a new government reform. Okay, so I'll have to go through these. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any more time in today's episode. Not enough time to go through all these. What I can do is just hover over them so you guys can see what our current options are. Because there's a lot of choices for this one. A ton of them. Look at all the choices. So it'll allow you guys to provide any suggestions of which ones you think we should go for. I'll also look through them before we start next episode. And we'll uh, get one of those selected. But unfortunately, again, I just don't have much time to record today. So we're going to have to end it here. I uh, hope you did enjoy today's episode. Uh, look at that. Uh, Brittany has had rebel problems for almost the entire campaign. They really need to be added into France so we can end all their, their problems and help them out. But they now have an alliance with Burgundy in addition to the alliance with England. So that's going to be a more difficult conflict now. And uh, obviously we can't do it yet. we still got all these other things we have to, to fix first. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to get them liberated from their, their issues. Uh, so that'll probably be the next war that begins Brittany. Uh, but yeah, I hope you did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you on the next one. And thanks for watching.